Good morning and welcome to worship today. Those of you who are here in house with us, those of you who are joining us online, a special welcome. After this past week, I think we know that summer is finally here, even though today's not too bad, right? But um, we are starting today our summer worship series that um, you'll learn a little bit more as we go on. You can read in your bulletin, but we're, um, it's titled In Memory of Her explore a little bit about some lesser known women in the Bible and today is kind of our kickoff theme for that when again I'll put that in a little bit more context but we are glad that you are here today um, for some it has been a roller coaster of a week um, as part of our culture and things but now is the moment where we can take a deep breath and let us sell, let ourselves be in the presence of the Lord, to find that peace and that hope, the comfort and the joy. So a couple announcements to share with you today. Um, remember our worship schedule. Next week we'll be back at Peace UCC for um, the 5th and the 12th, and then uh, the, the last two weeks we'll be um, back here, that's actually still July, it's up there, so that's my bad, but first two weeks and 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 the last two weeks, it's pretty simple, it's been the same for a couple of years, so um, we should have all that. Um, it reminds you that if you um, are or would still like to join in participating in the summer Bible study led by Bev Wallace, that happens on Tuesday mornings, you're welcome to do that. And in the coming weeks, you're going to begin to hear more and more about how you can be a part of the warming shelter that we are creating um, right here in the ground floor level during the winter season. Um, we're talking to our neighbors right now um, that are adjacent to the property, as the city likes to say, and make sure that they understand what's going on and have an opportunity questions. But it really doesn't matter when, if we get a conditional use permit. It really doesn't matter if we have the funding to, um, to buy the things which we do for the most part at this moment. It all depends on volunteers. And so from this community, we're probably going to need 50 to 70 volunteers for the winter season. Um, so, and there's all types of things that can happen. Some of that is an overnight shift, which I, that's the one that everybody wants to do. So sign up fast um, to do that one. Um, there'll be two people in four-hour shifts from um, uh, from eight to eight, but you can also you could sign up for all three of them or two of those if you want to. But there are a lot of other things that we have going on too. Just checking people in. Um, some of it is just building security till a certain time when other activities in the building are done. So you're going to learn more and more about that, about how you can be a part of meeting a gap that is in our community that neither Hope House nor The Haven is able to fill. We're in full partnership, as I've told you before, with them. This is not, a, not an end run around them, but it's meeting that gap that we still have for people who can't just drop in and not freeze overnight. Um, and that's the gap that we would like to fill. So those are our announcements today. So let's jump right in to worship. We're going to um, either learn or remember a new gathering song today. Come all you people, come and praise your maker. So um, Tony and Julie um, will help us know that. You want to, are you willing to just go through it once with just you and then we'll come in and do the two times? That way we can and help our memories or our learning or both. Okay. Why don't you stand up, because that helps us get good oxygen. And... Come all you people, come as your maker. Come all you people, come and praise your maker. Come all you people, come and praise your maker. Come now and worship the Lord. Okay, now let's all join in. Come all you people, come and praise your Maker. Come all you people, come and praise your Maker. 
Come all you people, come and praise your maker. Come now and worship the Lord. One more time. Come all you people, come and praise your maker. Come all you people, come and praise your maker. Come all you people, come and praise your maker. Come now and worship the Lord. Great job. God is good. And all the time. One more time because I couldn't quite hear you. I'm getting older, someone told me, and my hearing's not so good anymore. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, you have created this day. You have brought us out of bed to worship you. Whether we're here in pews or we're here in our homes, we are here to give you all praise and glory. Because even in this upside down, twisted world, you are still God. So hear our praise this morning. Visit us with your freshness, your newness, your salvation, your grace and your joy. So we can always be what you need us to be. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Lord Creator. And be pleased with us today as we worship you. Amen. God is good. And all the time. Why don't you go take a moment and greet some of the people around you and just let them know that you're excited that you're here today. Don't be afraid to get up and move and greet folks maybe you haven't seen in a while. God loves you. It's great to see you today. Steve, peace to you. So I, in case you get bored, is that what you're doing? Okay, just just check it. Oh. Okay, because I have we have several other anniversaries today, or special special birthday things. It's you. Okay. Wow. This is a special time. We have a lot of joy today. <laughs> Carol, it's great to see you. Yeah, and you see Anne is here in the back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Peace to you. Yes. As we come back together, there is great joy today because there are just all sorts of celebrations that are going on today. It's okay. You can sit down. So you guys are so dutiful and um, so it's your wedding anniversary today. Okay, for Tony and Peggy, and it's Peggy's birthday tomorrow. Wayne had a birthday last week, right? So on Thursday, I celebrated my 26th year of ordination. On Saturday, the United Church of Christ celebrated its 65th year of existence. And today, this very day, 171 years ago, a few people met at the Borchert's farm and formed and chartered what became First Presbyterian Church. Did I butcher that name, Jim? Oh, you were just smiling. So. so 171 years, and I am glad to say that we're still moving, and it's also exciting to know that we don't have anybody, despite how old some of us may feel sometimes, none of us were there in 1851, but how exciting is it to know? So as we worship today, keep those joys, those celebrations in your hearts and in your minds today. So as we come to hear God's word today, let us take a moment and let us once again center ourselves preparing us to hear God's word today. Please join your hearts with mine in prayer. O oh, fire divine, go through our hearts. 
O light eternal, illuminate our souls. May we discover you in your word today. Through the Spirit of Christ who abides in us, the people say, Amen. So as we start off our worship series called In Memory of Her, we hear this title or theme scripture today from the 14th chapter of Mark's Gospel. It reads, It was two days before the Passover, the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priest and the legal experts, through cunning tricks, were searching for a way to arrest Jesus and kill him. But they agreed that it shouldn't happen before the festival. Otherwise, there would be an uproar among the people. Now Jesus was at Bethany visiting the house of Simon, who had a skin disease. During dinner, a woman came in with a vase made of alabaster and containing very expensive perfume of pure nard. She broke open the vase and she poured the perfume on Jesus' head. Some grew angry with this and they said to each other, Why waste this perfume? This perfume could have been sold for almost a year's pay and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Leave her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. You always have the poor with you. And whenever you want... You can do something good for them, but you won't always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body ahead of time for burial. And I tell you the truth, whenever the whole world, when, whenever in the whole world the good news is announced, what she has done will be told in memory of her. The word of God for the people of God. Not sure if I see any young people on site today, but I know we might have some online. So, Miss Brittany, microphone two on, Lori, handheld two. Just a little bit. Well, she can turn it up once it's moving. Okay. Good morning. There we go. We don't have any young friends, but we do usually have some online. And I know we have uh, a few families that are going to check in online because they're about to do some traveling, which is really exciting. So I thought we would talk specifically about traveling today. And as we only have grown-ups today, I know that you guys have probably done your fair share of packing. Yeah? Some nods? How many of you guys have ever packed for a trip before? Packed yeah. for a trip. Packed for a trip before. Thing in your head. Ever had to get ready for a trip by yourself? Kind of make that mental list in your head of everything that you need to put in your suitcase. You ever felt like uh, you, you were putting in more of your house than you were actually leaving behind? And you were like, all right, everything that I need. And you're like, okay, I don't actually wear this many clothes when I stay home. You're like, all right, I need obviously seven outfits for the three days that I'm leaving. <laughs> and I was thinking, you know what's really amazing? Is there was the story in the Bible And Jesus told 72 people to leave their homes and go tell the good news. And you know what he told them to bring? Nothing. He said, pair up and travel around and bring nothing with you. 
that those who wanted to receive you will give you everything you need. And the places where you're not meant to be, move on. So you guys like to pray with me? Dear God, Dear God, there are a lot of changes. There are a lot of changes happening in our world right now. Passing over us all right now. Please help me. Please help me. Find where I need to be. Find where I need to be. Give me the tools. Give me the tools. To bring with me. To bring with me. To do my greatest good do my greatest good and share your love with all share your love with all amen amen thank you miss Brittany. so let's take a little trip just like we imagine you don't need to pack anything right now you just need to join your minds with mine we're going to go into a mountain that overlooks the ruins of the ancient city of Ephesus. That's in Turkey nowadays. There is a cave there that's cut into the rock, and it's known as the secret grotto of St. Paul. It is long and narrow. It's about 50 feet deep, six and a half feet wide, and about eight feet high, and it can contain some incredible 5th century frescoes, you know, paintings on the wall, depicting Paul and other figures from the Bible and early Christian history. I'm going to put up one of the frescoes here. Okay, Lori, why don't you advance one? Because it doesn't seem to want to do it for me. Okay. This is Paul. And there he is. He's shown. He's there. We know it's Paul because his name is actually written there next to him. He's shown with an open book on his lap. That part's barely visible now. It's begun to chip away a little bit through natural moisture and erosion over the century. But we can see his hand that is up in a symbolic gesture for iconography. That is a sign of blessing. It's a blessing gesture. Sometimes you might see me at the end of the service and I'll put my hand in this sign that's mimicking the Greek letters Cairo of Jesus Christ. And in iconography, those of you who like ancient art, religious art particularly, that is a sign of a blessing. The book open on Paul's lap is a symbol that he is teaching. And as I said, it, we know it's Paul because those Greek letters that you see etched there are his name. So this is pretty fascinating. This is from the 5th century. So we know, and this is why it gets the name, the secret grotto of St. Paul. It doesn't necessarily mean that Paul hung out here when he was in Ephesus, because we know he actually was down in the city. But someone painted these frescoes. Now, next to him, if we expand the picture, there's another figure there next to him. And it's a fascinating figure. But let's look at first it's the same size as Paul, which again in church iconography means that it was the same importance as Paul. Back then, before they had all of Leonardo da Vinci's great understanding of depth and perception and stuff, things were just size-wise. And if they're the same size, they were the same importance. We also see that this figure has a hand raised in a gesture of blessing as well. So somehow this person is somebody really 
special. Somebody in, in, in equal stature with Paul, many of us might think, well, that, that's Peter. We always think of Peter and Paul together. But it's not. And the reason we know that it's not Peter is because you can barely see it here, but this person's name is written next to them as well. So we know who this is. This is a figure of a woman. Her name is Theoclea. Now you may not have heard of her. She's not directly in the Bible, but she is from apocryphal tales that came up in the mid to late second century Christian text called the Acts of Paul and Theoclea. The way that Theoclea, who is the main character in this story, or the mother of the main character in the story, Thecla, she's portrayed in this fresco indicates that she must be understood to be a great authoritative teacher who was in parallel and in agreement with Paul's teaching. So here we are in the 5th century. There is a depiction of a woman teacher of the church in equal status with Paul. That certainly doesn't sound like the church that we often understood that seemed to silence the voice of women. But the fact that you have never heard of her might lead you to believe that it's just an obscure story that was really only known in this small area, not widely read or remembered. But actually, you'd be wrong. The story of Thecla and her mother goes like this. Thecla was a young woman who, upon hearing Paul preach, decided to defy social convention and become an itinerant preacher of the gospel. And the story was widely told and remembered in the early days of Christian history. In fact, as late as the 17th and 18th century, religious painters were depicting her. She was not somehow lost in ancient history. In fact, the Spanish town of Tarragona, just outside of Barcelona, claims her as their patron saint. So what happens then, somehow, between the 17th and 18th century and now that we don't know at all. Well, we have a little clue, so if we go to the next picture, we're going to see a little close-up of Theoclea. Now, it's hard to tell just by this picture, but if you were there in person, you would clearly see that her eyes were gouged out. It's not just an erosion of the fresco but that somebody intentionally took and gouged her eyes out. And then her hand in the sign of the blessing has been burned. Someone intentionally has placed a torch there, a flame, to burn off that sign of her blessing, her role as a teacher. Somehow, in the last two to three hundred years of Christianity, there was an attempt to erase Theoclea from the faith. The fact that Paul was not defaced in this way means that it was targeted for her. This wasn't part of the Islamic invasion of the area that would have done the same to all the statues for their concern about making graven images of God, something that we Christians don't quite hold the same way that other religions do. But it was only done to her, a woman. 
To me, this single image encapsulates the story of women in Christianity. In the early church, they flourished. We have strong evidence of that in Scripture, that they were leaders in the church. Paul, as we'll learn this summer, called many women the word that we translate as bishop, as deacons, as teachers. They supported the ministry. They allowed their houses to become house churches. They were leaders. Even in the Vatican, in the ancient catacombs, there are pictures of women priests from days long gone past. The women, the witness is clear, in the early days of Christianity were an equal place as disciples and apostles of Jesus. Yet these stories and texts have been gouged out of our written memory and their authority has been burned away by an androcentric and and misogynistic patriarchal church culture. And a lot of that only somehow grew up since, ironically, the Enlightenment. This morning's reading from the Gospel of Mark is another similar portrait Here is a woman that Jesus lifts up and says that whenever the gospel is preached, it will be done in memory of who? Her. Somehow her name has been erased. Oh, we'll sit here at the table and we'll break bread and we'll remember the name of the one who betrayed Jesus. But we will not remember the name of the one who Jesus said. We should remember her name. You heard this story. Jesus is dining in the home of Simon. A skin disease, perhaps leprosy, something that would have made him an outcast in Jewish culture. He was there dining sharing a meal with an unclean and unworthy person to society. And there he was at the table, and this woman comes in. She breaks this incredible, expensive jar filled with perfumed ointment and pours it on his head, and people get angry. Well, we could have done that and given the money to the poor, We don't have to have a fancy church. We can give the money to the poor. We don't need stained glass windows. We can give money to the poor. We don't need air conditioning. We can give the money to the poor. We don't need indoor plumbing. We can give the money to the poor. We don't need phone lines in the church. We can give the money to the poor. You know, we've all entered into that discussion in some way or another. But Jesus says that this wasn't a waste. That this was a recognition That here in our very midst, even in the midst of the poverty and the brokenness of the world, God is in our midst, and that is worth having some generous, lavish celebration. When Jesus says the poor we always have with us isn't some disinterested statement. It's a statement of fact that we can sell all of our riches and feed the poor, but Jesus knows that unless there is a cultural change, unless there is a change from the authorities of the world, the poor will just be there time and time again. And why not celebrate the way out of real and full poverty? Why not celebrate the Messiah, the one who calls us to live in a new way. Why not celebrate that this one in our midst who came into the world to tell us about love and grace and forgiveness, that this one will die soon. Jesus said, stop scolding her. 
leave her alone. Stop bothering her. She has done a beautiful thing. Truly, I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. And so here we are, 2022. Let's just make it an even 2,000 years after this incident takes place. This woman's prophetic action did not become a part of the gospel knowledge of Christians. Her name has been lost. Whenever the gospel is proclaimed, she is not remembered. This faithful disciple has been forgotten. And I do believe that through the centuries it was because she was a woman. Someone who, as society grew, became less and less important. And this unnamed disciple, I don't believe, is alone in history. There is plenty of evidence that the followers of Jesus right from the beginning. Throughout the history of God, women were judges and prophets, apostles, teachers, followers of God. They testified to in our scriptures, and yet even the ones with names we've often sidelined and we've relegated somehow that their only importance is because they bore a child. But I think scripture is more sophisticated than we are here in this century. Scripture is more sophisticated because they knew when to tell a story of a woman that it had a purpose. It's only we who have stripped them of that purpose. All these women, like the her in our story today, acted lavishly to recognize the power of God at work in the world, even in the midst of their own poverty. These women would share no expense, no sacrifice, to let the world know that God Our culture, even today, is filled with women who have given out of their poverty, their brokenness, their culturally defined lower status, and sacrificed so that all could know the joy of God. They gave so we could be our best, yet we have forgotten their name. The unnamed women of our native nations whose cultures were enslaved, who we now visit in museums, yet they cared so lavishly for people and for the land. The unnamed women of the Middle Passage who sacrificed everything to raise their children even when they were enslaved, when they touched the shores of this nation. Their names were taken from them. And they were given their slave names. But yet they told the story. And they raised their children. The unnamed women who kept the homes and farms going while husbands and sons died in war. The unnamed women who taught us what freedom and justice mean while men signed the piece of paper and got the glory. The unnamed women who fought to bring about voting rights and equal rights, whose names we do not know. The unnamed women who lost their lives in back alleys and on kitchen tables, while health care ignored them. 
the unnamed women who kept our churches alive and vibrant, all while being ignored by the official polity of our churches. It's so bizarre and upsetting to read from both of our congregations these histories that go back and minutes that of meetings and things that go back well over a hundred years and realize that apparently the only people who mattered in our churches were the misters and then it would, they got their names Mr. James, Mr. Jim, Mr. Joe, Mr. Don but all of it was always just Mrs. Joe, Mrs. John we never know their names all we get is a little Mrs. next to their name it praises them sometimes in the minutes for the things that they did for the church, but we don't know their names. They were only known because they're husbands. It's sad that we have silenced those names from history. And now both the UCC and the Presbyterian Church USA have come a long way, baby. And it's great that that's not the issues that we are now. Now we fully embrace that, or at least we strive to. Many of you here at First Presbyterian remember Amy Brady. Amy so proudly wore the title that she was the first ruling elder, a first woman ruling elder ordained in this congregation just a few years after it was allowed in the 1950s. Our churches have made huge steps towards naming the her in our midst. But we, unfortunately, are not normative for our siblings in Christ. Just recently, I chose to remove myself from a meeting where a female pastor was told not to speak in this meeting. I chose that I didn't need to be in that meeting and chose to leave with her. Doesn't make me a hero. It's sad that we still live in a culture who acts like that. Well, we could go on and on, but today I want us to stand in memory of all the hers that have been forgotten in time, all the hers that we owe our existence to, but have been erased from history. So over the next 10 weeks, we're going to explore who some of these hers are, both in Scripture and in the world around us. We'll see how their choice to treat God Some of these women you may have heard of, others may be completely unknown to you. That's the point. We gather in memory of her to celebrate that God calls not only men, but women. The answer in our church is when someone says, Do you are getting women? is no, we don't. We don't are getting
sneers of scorn defying with rare perfume she filled the room preparing Christ for dying a faithful woman left a tomb by love's divine commission she heard she the word arising from submission a faithful woman left the tomb with resurrection gospel she saw she heard she preached the word apostle to apostle centuries were hidden, unsung, unwritten, and unheard, the guided and forbidden, the Spirit's breath, the Spirit's fire, unfree and slave, descending. sadness mending spirit blows the spirit calls by love's divine ordaining the friends we need to serve and lead their powers and gifts unchaining the spirit the spirit calls from women, men, <coughs> friends we need to be ready, though I said make them welcome. Please be seated. Today as we come to this feast that God has prepared, broken bread and shared cup. We do so in memory of her, the one who was willing to defy the norms of the world and recognize God in her midst, so that all of us may learn. As we come to this table, as we prepare ourselves for God's gifts, it is fitting that we take this opportunity to also prepare to share gifts with God, to give to God all those lavish things, just as this woman has given. Whatever our costly oil that we have, whatever seems so precious to us, that we can't imagine ever giving away, let us now freely give so that the gospel may not simply be spoken in word, but shared among all. Because of your offering, because of your gifts, our ministry is able to do so many things. Last week we were at the community's Juneteenth celebration in Citizens Park. And we had a booth there, the only church that was invited to do those types of things. And we had conversations and we shared with a number of people about who we are and that we believe that church is not just coming on a Sunday and sitting in a pew. We could talk about our feeding programs and our warming shelters. We can talk about our welcoming and our inclusivity. We can talk about love and joy. All of those things can happen because of the generosity of your offering. So today, when you come forward to receive God's gifts, you are also invited to come and to bring your gifts 
to place in the offering plate here in front of the baptismal pond. And together, we build God's beloved community. A place where all have a voice and a name. Friends, let us come in prayer. Do you have special prayers today that you would like to name? We remembered certain joys and celebrations already, but are there other things that you wish to name and pray for today? Yes, Lucy. Praise God that Jim DeWine is back at home and always prayers for him, but also for you, Lucy, that you can continue to be that loving and caring person there with me. Other prayers today we wish, yes, David. 55 years. Is it fair that that's older than me? <laughs> but that is a joy and and. And a blessing. Was it was it your fiftieth when we had the big the big party? Yeah. So what a what a joy it, it is to continue to have your models of love and faith in our midst. Congratulations for that. Other prayers that we wish to lift up today? So some of you asked me about my father's surgery that was originally scheduled to happen on Monday. That's been rescheduled for July 11th, um, and now that I mention it, those of you who don't know, um, he has a paralyzed vocal cord, and they're doing a procedure that um, I don't quite understand it fully, but essentially puts some sort of an artificial wire in there that might cause, allow it to vibrate to make, and they said his voice may be different, but it, he might have one, so, um, but that's been moved to July 11th, so. but thank you for those of you who asked me. Okay, then let's pray. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, we come before you convicted that we have been a part at times of a culture that tries to silence the voices of your prophets. But we are also excited that we are here because we know that your grace is upon us, that we are learning, that we are being forgiven, and that you are allowing us to speak, to speak up, to make sure that the errors of the past are not repeated. We thank you, Lord, that from the beginning of time, your plan always was to love us. And that's why you created us and you called us very good. And it means that when we wandered, you called us back. When we made mistakes, you picked us up. And even when you were angry, even when you were disappointed, you never stopped loving us. We thank you for that great gift of love. We thank you that when the time was right, you took on flesh and you, become, and you became a human just like us. You know our pain. You know our sorrow. And you keep telling us that we are loved. We are worthy. We look now at the world, O oh Lord, and what we have made of it. And we see that we need your presence more than ever. Bring peace and healing and reconciliation in the midst of a broken world and particularly the brokenness of our nation. Help us to care for one another as we would care for ourselves. Help us to recognize your loving presence in all of creation, even when it doesn't look like you, how you are in us. Let us celebrate your presence in others. 
we celebrate anniversaries, birthdays. We remember those who are struggling in body, mind, or circumstance. We remember those who even now are being healed by you. We thank you that you have gifted us with a vision that is farther than our own arms, that we may see the needs of your creation around us. Continue to empower us to meet those needs. Lord, we remember not only the prayers of those in this room, but we remember the prayers that are being shared even now online. Prayers for Melanie, for all who can bear children. She invites us that we pray that we can stand together for the return of rights for all. Lord, hear us as we pray out to you with our lips or with our hearts. Hear our prayers, for they are offered in sincerity. For the cold, the hungry, for the war torn, for those who weep and mourn for those who celebrate, for those who have been found, and those who have found themselves lost, we pray. For all the hers in this world that have been ignored, who have been made to feel insignificant, we lift them up so you may rise them up. Let their humanity be known. And let us learn to say their name. And now, O oh Lord, holding together all these prayers, all the needs of the world, we join our voices together. And we pray the prayer that you first taught your disciples and who they passed on from generation to generation. We use whatever translation, whatever words speak to us most clearly as we speak to you. You hear us all. And you know our hearts. And so we pray together. Our Father, our Mother in heaven, Holy is your name, your kingdom come, and your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory are yours now and forevermore. Friends, when Jesus was at sup with his disciples, he took a loaf of bread, he gave it to them, and he broke it. And he said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. In the same manner, after the supper, our Lord took a cup. And again, he gave thanks to God, and he poured into it, said, this is the blood of the covenant poured out for you. Take, drink, and know that you are forgiven. Friends, whenever we eat this loaf, and we drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's saving grace until he comes again in the fullness of glory. 
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us feast together. This morning as we receive the supper, I ask some of our, I was going to ask, did Tony have to leave? Okay. David and Nancy, are you able to be servers today as we celebrate your 50th anniversary? And Peggy, even though Tony's not here, come and join us. I was going to have two of the anniversary couples, but I will work with you. And as Julie begins to play, let us share or come forward and share in this sacrament that Christ has given. You guys want to Come, all is ready. Let us feast in memory of Christ and of her. Gracious God, thank you for filling us once again with this covenant. May we be sealed in your presence as we are sent out into this community, into our workplaces and our homes. May we always be lavish in our love for you. May we always lift up and never tear down. Send us out, O oh Lord, in the palm of your hand. Friends, I invite you, if you are able, to please stand for the blessing today. As we remind ourselves with an open palm, we receive God's blessing, and we remind ourselves with an outstretched palm that we are also a giver of the blessings of God. Hear these words. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ with you. May the love that is God be before you, behind you, and in you. 
And may the Holy Spirit bind us together wherever we go as one people. Let us live for Christ and let us remember her. Amen. Let us sing ourselves out with may the God of hope go with us.